camera system with that top down view and active guidelines uh, is really good. So backing out of parking spaces helps out a lot uh, using this. Also parking in general. So you can see that um, next to these lines right here and the way it stitches them together makes them perfectly straight. Uh, so you can see there's a little bit of disjointedness here, but overall uh, it is pretty much perfect as far as the, the view. And when we go to forward, we can see the forward view as well. Uh, so being able to press the, the camera button and being able to not only in reverse, but also going forward uh, really helps out with parking and just maneuvering in tight spaces in general. It does have the power lift gate, which is nice. And this cargo area, although maybe smaller than other vehicles that have, um, you know, other SUVs and stuff, this is a very functional cargo area. Um, so you can see it's almost a completely flat floor. And this is how much space when you have the seats up. So you can actually add to the cargo space if you want uh, by lowering the seats using these uh, levers on either side. Uh, there's also a 12 volt power supply over here. Little cubby there on the right side. Little cubby there on the left side. And these are handles, to, more handles for lowering these seats. And you can see that center part right there could be lowered separate from the ends. Uh, th this also lifts up, and then there's a full diameter spare tire and tools and a Bose subwoofer. And uh, so this is just kind of like loose. These panels are just kind of loose on top of it. So, so let me see what it looks like here. There's the tools and everything. There's a little bit of extra space here as well. And you can lower the load floor just slightly if you want to. Um, but, but yeah, these panels are just kind of like sitting here. It kind of makes it look like they snap in place, but this that's just a handle. It doesn't really... They're just kind of laying there. But yeah, you can fold these seats down 60-40 um, and 40-40-20 basically as well. So depending on how you fold them down uh, to add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. Or you can fold them all down and have a wide open space back here. Now the second row, man, look, the inside materials are nice. They look really good. Um, but the second row is pretty decent as far as space. Like I can get back here and it's okay. Uh, it does have the latch system for the car seats as the center armrest with heated seats back here. And it's three stage, so it's high, medium, and low, three heated seats on the ends. This opens, opens up, you have a little storage space there, cup holders that moves up out of the way. You can also fold the center part down like I mentioned. Um, and then there's some climate control vents. Quite a bit of a hump there in the center. Uh, there's pockets on the back of both front seats. But really, I mean, uh, these seats are actually more comfortable than the driver's seat to me. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, back here is pretty good. I mean, I can sit here, no problem. Um, so, depending on how far back you have the front seats, of course. There's some tap lights back here, which are already on because I have the doors open. So yeah, this driver's seat, I don't know what it is about it, but it's just not comfortable for me. Hopefully it'll be comfortable for you. Um, but yeah, having a traditional gauge cluster, at least a traditional looking gauge cluster, most people can understand that. There's the steering wheel, pretty straightforward. It does have this info button that you can cycle through. Get different information there in the center different trips and stuff or just nothing if you want like just a normal screen and they kept the CX-5 about the same for a little while now and I'm glad they hadn't added the idle stop or anything like that to it it does have a heated steering wheel heated seats up here as well um, wireless phone charger traditional shifter there's your different drive modes normal is really the best for normal driving of course the only thing I would do is maybe go to off-road uh, to just let the vehicle know if I'm driving off-road or something, but other than that, it's just leave it normal. Then it has the uh, the buttons here and little dial for controlling the screen. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just got to play around with it, get used to it. Turn the dial, choose what you want, press the dial in, and you can uh, make other selections, different sub-menus and stuff. Uh, the navigation's cool because you can just turn the dial and zoom in and out on the navigation map real easy instead of 
like traditionally you just like pinch zoom and stuff uh, this you can kind of get your bearings real rapidly by turning that dial uh, so that's a really good feature and then this is the volume knob and then you can mute the radio quickly by pressing that button it has these cup holders here armrests it's kind of rubbery soft it is soft it lifts up and then you have uh, USB ports uh, 12 volt power supply and a little storage area there auto dim rearview mirror home link garage door opener controls as well place to put your shades up here and you got tap lights interior lights have them turn on with the door or not this is the off button if you want to not have that uh, sunroof controls there and you have this little ambient light here the visors are cloth like the head headliner it has a extension here instead of uh, it doesn't slide out it uses has this little extension here and then you have a little uh, clip right in here on this that slides open so you got the mirror and then you got this cover and then on that cover is a little place to put like your registration or driver's license or whatever right in here it's a pretty good idea kind of gets it out of the way and then there's the sunroof uh, now the sunroof has a shade that covers up 100 percent of the light you can tilt it up you can slide it back that kind of thing and then the visibility um it's not bad. I mean, you can see pretty good back here. Now, of course, the camera system and the parking sensors and um, stuff like that helps out. Let's go ahead and put it in sport mode and see what it does. All right. So there's no... I don't feel any torque steer or anything like that. Uh, it just feels like it accelerates nicely, nice and firm, nice uh, steady acceleration. Uh, normal transmission feel. And the sport mode doesn't really add a huge amount. I mean, the, the, the normal drive mode is fine as far as acceleration and normal driving. So yeah, the handling and acceleration in normal mode uh, feels about the same, if not, you know, some, sometimes better than the sport mode for some reason. So yeah, I wouldn't even bother with the drive modes really. Uh, now it does have an off-road mode, so the off-road mode may be good for you know snow or slippery surfaces, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe if you're on a dirt road, that kind of thing, but. Uh, as far as like the sport versus normal, I would just stick with normal. Setting aside the seat comfort, uh, that is the, the one thing that me personally uh, causes a problem for me is the, is the seat. We'll just set that aside. And uh, other than that particular thing, the rest of the vehicle, I think this is probably my favorite Mazda vehicle, the CX-5. Um, because it is fun to drive it does accelerate nice it has a traditional feel it doesn't have any kind of idle stop or the engine doesn't turn off when you come to a complete stop uh, it's just a regular um, like traditional feeling vehicle that's solid it feels like it's very solid and planted on the road uh, the handling is nice the acceleration and braking is nice uh, visibility is good uh, the amount of space you have in the back is it's not a huge cargo area, but it's still not too small. Like it actually is usable for the average person. Uh, so unless you need like a large SUV or something, this actually is pretty good choice. So you do have a digital screen here uh, for the gauges, but it's, it's very traditional. Like it has a regular look um, with the different needles and, you know, fuel gauge is normal looking with a needle. Uh, tachometer speedometer looks normal and you can check go through and, and have different information there in the center um, but it gives you that normal look and then it has some additional features since it's a screen and not just a needle uh, it gives you some additional features like showing you the speed limit and the 
you know, what your cruise control is set at on the needle, that kind of stuff. You also have the heads up display, which is good. Uh, so, you know, pressing the info button, you can cycle through. There's different trips. You get the uh, safety features there. Um, when it's time to service the vehicle, digital compass, range to empty, uh, that kind of thing. You can also have nothing there if you want. Uh, the cruise control is, once again, very traditional. You set, resume, cancel um, here. And then you can, in addition to the normal feel of the cruise control, you do have the adaptive cruise control which you can adjust the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you now it has uh, the lane keep assist system uh, which does not work in normal speeds like right now it doesn't keep you within the lane um, now it doesn't wander or anything it's a very solid vehicle but it doesn't have that lane tracing type uh, feel uh, now this will take into effect like if you're going like 25 miles an hour or something like that but it's not really that useful in the in the speed range in which this vehicle has it available so I don't even I don't even I haven't even experienced that that feature because I just don't on the roads that I drive on it's just never is is enabled it just never turns on so it's like it doesn't have it so I don't even see that as a factor for a lot of most people basically um, but yeah, it's not, it's it's very solid and planted. It does it stays straight, so it's not hard to drive at all. It's very easy to drive, and I think that's probably the the biggest plus, the big, biggest value proposition is it's easy to drive. And other than the seat comfort, uh, it would be a great vehicle. I mean, I would definitely recommend it for a lot of people to check it out and test drive it. Now, the the seat comfort is one of those type of seats where you sit in it for like for me it only took like 10 minutes and i knew for a fact that it wasn't gonna work so it's not like you have to you know drive it for a week or whatever you'll know pretty much right away uh within a short test drive that whether the seat is going to work for you or not uh, so that's the plus you can go ahead and you know see if it works for you just within a test drive at the dealership that kind of thing i have a full night video so you can see what the headlights look like you can see what the interior lights are all about uh, there's a few issues here and there the cargo area is probably the worst uh, but as far as using the vehicle at night it's, it's it's the headlights are pretty decent so that that's good uh, and that's when you're you know that's the main concern as far as m my main concern is the headlights while i'm driving now as far as like the pockets and stuff it does this one does have the the pocket there for a cell phone it is a uh, wireless charger as well and it's kind of out of the way has a traditional shifter which most that's the thing about this vehicle it's fairly traditional you know the person can step out of a you know 25 year old vehicle get into this vehicle and pretty much drive it without much of a learning curve um, now the screen here is controlled with the knob down here so uh, you will need to play around with it in your driveway to kind of get accustomed to that this whole screen right here um, but it's fairly easy to get it's very easy to use and navigate through and you know there's a lot of information you don't have to always have up either as well navigation looks pretty good the camera system is really good uh, they did a good job uh, with the screen size good enough anyway to where you can see the camera the the resolution and all that stuff's good um, it does have a volume knob so it's the the CX-5 is overall I think a lot of people's favorite pick in the Mazda lineup. It looks good. That's another thing that uh, they did a good job with the styling. Mazda did seem to it does seem to do a good, great job with with styling on their Mazda vehicles, um, uh, and this one is no except is no exception. This one's still good. It has that same design feature. Um, now. There's a couple things that that stand out that like it doesn't have the chrome buttons down here and that down here to where that they're they're more visible now. Um, you know, in other models and the model the Mazdas had some issues with uh, some chrome buttons to where when the sun is shining on them you can't see what they are. This is just very simple black background, white lettering, very easy to understand and see 
and find and use uh, no no swiping anything or uh, it's just a button and you press it you know it does have the paddle shifters which I don't really use but you could you know use those for downshifting and upshifting depending you know, like if you're going down a hill or something like that the sound system sounds pretty good um, it's not all like it has the Bose sound system and it sounds pretty good it's a, it's a I would say it's you know a little bit above average as far as sound quality uh, but it's not great and it's not like fantastic wowing me or anything like that but it is good it does have a good sound system uh, but just not you know spectacular or anything compared to other Japanese or you know most other Japanese brands uh, Mazda tends to be a little bit quieter so this one is fairly quiet uh, you can hear some noise uh, but at least it doesn't have like this sound from the engine doesn't sound like the engine is going to like jump out of the car or um, any kind of weird noise quirks I guess uh, it's just kind of normal you know background noise background sound while you're driving and uh, when you accelerate of course you can hear the the engine a little bit but it's not like a it's, it doesn't it doesn't sound like it's overly loud for the acceleration for the struggle that it has to go through to, to rev up the engine um, so some other brands, it's it's like the engine is excessively loud and you're not even really revving it much, you know. Uh, this one's, you know, it's not really that, 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 you don't really experience that problem. Or I haven't experienced it anyways.